Asus just dropped their new ROG Keras 2 Ace ergonomic gaming mouse and the first thing that's coming to your mind is well this is probably just another Zowie EC or Pulsar X-Lite clone. It really isn't. I'll explain why. And just to get it out of the way so I don't bore you by repeating back of the box or website specs, I'm going to throw a few up on the screen here just so you can see them, but I want to talk about actually using them and what is this mouse. But first, take a look at everything you get in your box. As you see, you get tons of goodies, all your paperwork, some stickers, some grips for one and two, and then your sides, which I did not use, but they are fairly thin and feel pretty grippy. They're not mushy by any means. Of course, you get your mouse, which all this comes in a white variation as well. You get your speed dongle, which this is how you're going to get the 4K. You get your regular dongle, which is up to 1K, and then you get your little adapter, which is cool. It's got that mouse pad clip on the side as well. Absolutely love that little touch. You get your uh, USB-C to A cable. And and then some extra feet. Now these feet that you're seeing right here are the feet that come stock on the mouse. I put the extra feet on here because I like that Zowie, that big control type of foot. But again, these feet are the ones that come stock. Then you get this little baggie. But now let's get to the important stuff and we're going to kick it off by looking at the measurements. Now I'll throw up the manufacturer's dimensions as well, but we want to get those actual dimensions all the way around the entire mouse. So number one and most importantly is going to be that length and I'm going to go all the way from the tip of the buttons right up front here and then all the way to the tail end and we're getting right let me get it centered right there we're pretty much getting right at 120 millimeters as you can see there now let's get that mid grip which is I think the next most important and I'm going to get it from the mid right there and right underneath the buttons where I think our thumb will sit and you can see we're getting right at 59 millimeters if I pull it all the way to the bottom we're getting right at 57.7 or 58.7 so still pretty much 59 if I flip it around and we're going to go from buttons to the side right there in the middle of them and we're getting right at 54 millimeters now as far as the hump and we're going to go right mid which is going to be sensor and then to the mid of the buttons there we're getting right at 41 millimeters so that's mid hump now if we go to rear lower hump on the back end we're getting 34 millimeters hopefully you guys can see that in the camera actually like 33 close to 34 there now the other hump which is definitely most important on an ergo mouse is that rear lower flare and we are getting right at 63.8 millimeters and as you see it does flare in a little bit towards the top being around 55 millimeters and the last one not to bore you with too many dimensions here but the flare out on the front of the buttons we're getting right at 60 millimeters there and then as far as the lift i'm gonna do this right in the middle so i don't press the buttons down but it's pretty much balanced across there we're getting right at 19 millimeters as far as ground to the top of the buttons now let's go ahead and take a look at the weight of the Keras 2 and we're going to do some comparisons here and remember I do have the bigger replacement feet on the bottom here but that weight difference is going to be mild from feet to feet and we are using an actual postal skill here. So slapping this on we are getting right at 54 grams and let me tell you what it is incredibly well balanced like you don't feel any extra weight in the front or the back I mean to a T this thing is balanced and it does feel incredibly lightweight but just for some references here we get the Postlor X Lite size one or is it the size three the mini one we're getting right at 52 grams and then we'll go with the zowie ec2c wireless we are getting 76 grams wow you really feel that weight difference and then the pulsar x light size two over here the medium one we're getting right at 54 grams so 54 grams on the x light again going back to the keras 2 ace we're getting 56 grams now let's go ahead with our infrared camera and what this does is going to give us the heat signature of my hand transferring on to the mouse as far as my grip. Now of course this is different hand size to hand size but I just want to show you my core grip here. When I grip this mouse it's not really in the back of my palm. It's pretty much right back here. I get a little slight touch back here occasionally and then over there when I start dancing around with it but it's not sitting in my palm. It's definitely resting up here pretty much comes right below my knuckles and that's where that hump is going to sit for my grip so I'm almost 
clawing this mouse kind of. So let's go ahead and pull it underneath the heat signature here. Let some of that heat transfer. I'll let it go and you can pretty much see right here. So you see my fingers are definitely going right up there. You're getting a slight heat transfer right there and around to the side, but it's not red. You're still seeing some of that green and orange because it's really just the heat waves coming off my hand to it. If I was to rest my hand on it completely here and let it rest, you'll see it will turn more red. So as far as my personal grip with this mouse, it definitely just rested up here right before my knuckles is where that hump set and I was almost clawing this rather than palming this ergo mouse. Next test we're going to do is the force gauge meter. So what I'm going to do is press this into it so I'm not just sitting here saying, oh, if I squeeze it like this, because everyone's going to squeeze it a little bit different, this will actually press in it to pounds and see if we get any of that flex or button actuation there to make the test fair, not just talking about one person's grip to another. So starting on the side by the buttons, going up to 10 pounds, no button actuation and no flex up towards the front, none as well. Now another prime flex location on Ergo Mice is back here on the back, so let's check that. We will go up to 12 pounds, nothing. How about on the top here? No flex up there as well. Now let's get to this other side and press in up to 12 pounds and no flex whatsoever. By the way, that you were just hearing was me pressing the buttons. Over here on this side, there's no flex either. Now the bottom is going to flex a little bit. I can go up to 12 pounds and again, it's just a mild amount of flex. But of course, if you're pressing your mouse on the bottom, you're using it completely wrong. I mean, the build of this mouse is incredibly solid. Now, as far as the coating and texture of this mouse, they are using PBT on the one and two, which has a really nice textured feel, just like a keycap if you felt that. Now on the rest of the mouse, they're using a bio something or another material there to reduce, I believe it's up to 46% of the carbon impact, which is super cool to see stuff like that. But again, across the entire mouse, even up to the front with these being PBT in the back, you do have that kind of grainy texture. It's not that smooth pulsar type feel or a Logitech type feel, which I really like. I really prefer this textured feel. It feels really nice. And on the sides, you can see you got these little uh, cut-ins on the side over here, which I thought those would annoy me, but they really don't. They honestly do give you a little bit of grip. My fingers never slid on them, but you do have those grips if you want to slap them on there as well. But across the entire mouse, even though these are PBT on the top, you still got that texture all the way around the entire mouse. Now let's go to get the sound test of the switches and we're using the ROG optical switches here and what you were just looking at there was the ambient sound of my room so you can hear the difference again from the switches, how loud and clicky they are. And then on the bottom, as you see, you have your dongle or your 2.4, your wired mode, your Bluetooth, you have your DPI button and then your pairing button. And right down there is that dongle storage. Now, as far as the feel and actually using the buttons on these, the one and two on the Keras 2 Ace, they feel exactly like a Pulsar X Lite. The same amount of give or bounce and then pressure, they feel, again, like a spitting image. But what I really like on the Keras 2 are the side buttons. They're a little bit smaller than EC or Razer or, again, the X Lite. But whenever you put your hand right here, even me with that relaxed claw, or if you got a smaller hand and you can palm this, the buttons are right there. They come out of the mouse a little bit, as you can see. You got that space in there. I mean, they're perfect. This is what I always say I want in a mouse. I want a button I can truly decipher one to the other whenever I'm using them. And holy smokes, they are incredibly crispy and I don't have any excess play in them and they feel the same across both of them, which gosh, I, I can't, Say it enough, these buttons are perfect. But in my personal opinion, I will say the scroll wheel is just a pinch lighter than I would prefer. But again, that's me coming from a Pulsar X Lite where it's a little bit firmer, or again, being a main Zowie user, which is definitely a whole lot firmer. This does feel a little bit light, but I never ever got any accidental slips or swipes or weapon changes or anything. It did work, it just feels lighter.
So let's talk about the performance of the mouse and actually using it. Again, you got your USB adapter, you got your speed Nova adapter, which you can get 8K wired or 4K wireless, and then your regular dongle, which you can use it that way as well. But of course, when you use this, this dongle goes into here. So it's not two separate dongles, just so there's no mistaken. And of course you have your wired. So unless you're going directly into your PC, which I'd recommend you not, so you got that direct connection, you're gonna take your adapter again into your speed Nova dongle, and then your regular dongle, plug it in here, and you got this whole contraption and i will tell you it is a little bit loose in there going from the adapter to the speed nova bit right there but i never had any connection issues or whatever i mean heck it's just sitting there you're not again moving it around so no issues with that by any means and this was my primary form using a mouse but i did test it in the 1k variation as well but i never used it in the 8k wired variation because me personally if you got a wired option just use wired in 8k i just tend to get a few hiccups on my PC, so I always stick to 4K with all of my gear, just so I got that steady flow. As far as my use with this mouse and the performance of it, it was absolutely spot on. No hiccups, no delays, no jitters or anything. Again, it was precise, smooth, and right to the point. I even used it with the Omni receiver, so I used the uh, Asus keyboard, I forget the name of it, but I used them both paired up like that and still no delays, again, while running 4K in both both of them wireless it was absolutely flawless so really nice to see that again there was there was no issues whatsoever with the performance it was absolutely spot on all right, so now I am going to show you the Asus Armory Crate software with the mouse. And we're going to click right over here. And as you can see, I got the keyboard connected um, right along with the Keras 2 Ace and the Omni receiver. So kicking it off over here to the Omni receiver, this is how I used it majority of the time because I'm using the Faucheon RX Low Profile with the Keras 2 Ace. And I got it paired up to the Keras 2 Ace dongle. If I paired it up just to the Faucheon dongle, which also has that Omni receiver, you're not going to get that 4K. So again, if you pair up multiple, multiple Asus devices, make sure you use the mouse dongle so then you can get that 4k there um, again i just use that same adapter if you plugged in an adapter i didn't try that again since i had the mouse one set up i just went with that but maybe if you use the adapter that'll work anyways but anyway so coming over here i want to show you the uh, mouse software so coming in here of course you can adjust all your buttons over there and edit them coming over here to the performances where things get a little juicy you can add more dpi settings here and then just delete them if you want um, as far as DPI notification, you got your polling rate again with that adapter on there. We can get up to 4,000. Now, if you do run it wired, you can get 8,000. But again, my primary use was in 4,000, butter smooth, angle snapping. You can either turn it on or off. I don't really notice much of a difference with that. Now, this angle tuning is, is kind of interesting. I'm like, what the heck is this, right? So I got to set to zero. I'm going to put it to, so anyway, zero. You can see my mouse scrolling across here. When I put it to 20, just look at it. it automatically goes down by itself. So good luck trying to find that zero again. And then again, if you do it over to this side, it goes to the right. So I don't know if you got a, a bad problem of your mouse kind of going to an angle, you can do 5% and it pretty much goes at that slight angle. Just watch it go down there. Again, I'm going directly across. And then if we go to zero, again, it's pretty much that natural flow. So I don't know if you got a problem with your mouse going to some certain angle, you can do that over there. Uh, you got lighting, which I forgot to mention. You do have that uh, scroll wheel actually goes RGB on this mouse. I just left mine at red at 25%, really never affected the battery. I um, mean, it's just nice. Nice little touch there. Um, calibration, as far as any of the ASUS surfaces or manual calibration, then you can adjust any of that. I, I really didn't mess with any of that. And I always kept my lift off distance at low and it's really nice. I'm moving it around right here and just a slight lift off the mouse pad, perfect distance. I, I really liked it there. Uh, power, again, what you got right there as far as lighting or sleep modes right over there, and then of course your firmware. And if you are curious, coming over here to the Omni receiver again, if you're using again a keyboard, you can still control everything right through it, just through that same receiver. And I'll talk about it in the performance section, but there's no delays or lags or hiccups or anything using the Omni receiver while keeping the mouse again at that 4K with the wireless uh, Fauci on keyboard as well, still butter smooth. So when I circle right back around to what I stated in the beginning of this video, where the ASUS ROG Keras 2 Ace is not an EC or an X-Lite clone, that might be the one disappointment for me because I love the EC and I main the X Lite, right? So what's the difference here? And this is personal preference, of course. Again, shape is king and that's going to differ hand to hand, so on and so forth. You all know I like a little bit of a bigger mouse. And when I put the Keras 2 Ace in my hand, 
it is smaller, definitely smaller than the EC2C. And then when I come over to my main Pulsar X Lite, again, I can get this in the back of my palm. I can rest there without my fingers jumping off the side and it fills me out. Again, coming back to the Keras, I'm more or less clawing this thing and I started getting hand cramps with it. But again, that's personal preference. Everything I showed you is hopefully be able to help you out again, seeing the size of this mouse. Where this truly sits, again, we can knock it out with the EC. That's not what it is. Then we look at the Pulsar X Lite, the size two and then the size one the mini one and then the medium one when you take this you take the Keras ace two put it right in the middle that is exactly where it sits so it's not a mini it's not a medium it's a schmedium right in the middle and this mouse is going to come in at 150 dollars which is pretty much what we see for mice these days around 120 to 150 but i think the features and functions and specs this mouse is packing it truly justifies that price and it's a fantastic mouse I personally would like a bigger one. For me, it's a little bit smaller, but again, personal preference. I think Asus hit it out of the park with this mouse. Complete win here.